What is the truth in the stories we are told? We've been given a story of a world fueled by separation. We've become separate from one another, separate from the earth, ultimately separate from the true nature of ourselves. It's time we learn the truth. It's time you rewrite your story. It's time to realign with who it is that you really are. This is the fifth dimension. You are infinite and eternal. We are infinite and eternal. Our natural essence, we could say, is, is simply being. We have this awakening coming together as a perfect storm. We're ready for this. We have the capacity inside. We just got to find that. All right, we're on the air. I want to welcome everybody in the Fifth Dimension podcast. And for today's show, I am joined by Calvin Corelli. Calvin, thanks so much for taking the time to come on the show. You bet, sir. It's good to be here with you. Happy, happy uh, Tuesday. Yeah, happy Tuesday. I'm excited to get this going. And so I was on your website and I wanted to start with this because I, I thought this was kind of funny as like almost an intro into your website. You wrote, uh, for most of my life, I was pretty fucked up. And then I decided I didn't want to be fucked up anymore. So I changed it. I mean, I, it's, it's almost like it's very profound in the way you wrote it, because I think a lot of people resonate with that. It's like, yeah, I'm kind of fucked up, too. And but boom, you changed it. I mean, do you want to talk about that and sort of, um, you know, just your journey and getting to where you are now? Yeah, I, I mean, it's interesting because I compare myself to to when I look back at, at the people I grew up with and, and friends that grew up in similar circumstances, I've managed to go further than most. And I think what the, the difference is, I started like way behind in, in many ways. I was like super insecure. I was, uh, I was bullied. Um, I, I just felt so completely, totally wrong and out of place. And, and it was painful enough that it propelled me forward. I was like, this is, this is terrible. I don't feel good. And so my life has been one sort of you know, just catching up with where I thought other people were, but like, you know, just working, grinding, whether it's like working on myself, on my psychology and my beliefs, on my business, on my skills, whatever. And then like, by the time I got to somewhere, I started looking around, I was like, where'd everybody go? Like, <laughs> like they, all of a sudden I'm so far ahead of everybody. I'm, what, what made that difference, right? What was it that made me be, all right, I'm just going to get to work and on fixing some of these things. And so many other people don't. It's, it's, a, it's something that I'm super fascinated with because mm -hmm. we live in a time where you can achieve anything you want. Like just go on Google, go on YouTube, go on Twitter, and you can connect with anyone. You can learn from anyone. You can, anything that you want is available to you. Right. But how many people are actually doing it? What is that difference that makes someone choose to actually improve their lives, actually go for their dreams, actually, actually even figure out what their dreams are versus just kind of like float along like everybody else. And I think my blessing was that I was just in more pain. Mm, right. Now, pain can sort of create uh, this resiliency, it creates this like, all right, I realize I'm at a rock bottom. I need to figure out where I'm going. And I, I definitely resonate in the sense because I've taken the time to figure out like I don't like where I'm at right now where do I want to actually go and I think actually just establishing what sort of the the end site is the dreams are then you just start working in that totally. direction and you know wh what do you is what do you think the reason most people don't actually take the time to figure this out is it just a lack of knowledge in it and like you're saying maybe the lack of uh push into it I mean because you know we live in like we, we live in a culture of the American dream, right? Like that's supposed, people are supposed to be going for what it is that they want. And I think yep. abundance is available for everybody. I think it's a want. It's, you got to want it, right? There has to be that desire. It's, uh, you know, desire is interesting because desire is sort of that, that like you're psychologically feeling the pain of not having the thing that you desire, right? So like mm -hmm. in many ways, the reason it feels good to satiate the desire is that that pain goes away. But desire is also, I, I, I believe that desire is divine, right? Desire, 
like at the core of it, we've got sexual desire, right? We want that woman, right? That man, like whatever that is. And that's where life comes from, right? It comes from that desire. If there wasn't that desire, there wouldn't be any more human life. We'd all be dead, right? So I think that's that's our creative life force. It's 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 a very sacred, divine, very, very good, powerful force. Most people have learned to numb it out, right? Mm-hmm. We're not allowed to like be aroused in public, right? <laughs> or like, and I'm not saying we have to act on that arousal and like now we have to go like hump anything that moves, but I think it's actually really healthy to feel that arousal. Like whether it's for for you know sexual or non-sexual, right? But that desire is super important, and I think it just gets conditioned out of us and 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 numbed out, and we're like, oh yeah, we're not supposed to feel that way. And like, I mean, the environment I grew up in in Denmark was it's like, you know, if you're too ambitious and you have too like too high standard, it's like oh tone it down a little bit, like this like discount, whatever thing, like mediocre thing is that's good enough for me. Like, don't rock the boat and be like, Oh, you want something better. Who do you think you are? And all that stuff. Right. So, um, I think we're, yeah, it's socialized out of us and we look at our peers and they're all like contented there. And like, so we just learn not to go for that. If you look at a Mm -hmm. baby, right. They know what the fuck they want. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Feed me. (laughs) my butt you know is like hurting like whatever they know know what they need and 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 want and they know how to go after it and then we're like oh don't be so demanding like stop like whining about you know our our parents socialize it out of us and we're like because that's how it is right no definitely and if anything there's a contradiction because we tell kids growing up they can be whatever they want to be and then we expect them to follow this like rigid line and if it's like, right. oh, you don't want to go to college, you want to actually do something else? No, that's going to be bad. You have to go be a doctor or you have to right. be. And it's interesting too, because like g- coming, growing up in Denmark, we have the law of, of gentle, right? They're the tall, tall puppy syndrome and all of that stuff. And then I got to America and I thought it was going to be different and better. And it's, it's freaking not. Mm-hmm. It's like Americans too are like, yeah, like you guys talk about the American dream, but then when people are actually successful, you don't celebrate them. Right. You're 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 like complaining and 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 whining and 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 ridiculing and like you know and 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 uh, harassing them. It was I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, there was a David Geffen who's billionaire. I, I forget like music. I believe I'm not really sure, but he posted a picture of like his yacht and be like, "Hey, I'm just hanging out, out here." And people are like, "Oh my God, you're so tone deaf." And like, mm. it's like where is that aspiration? Like, fuck yeah, I want a yacht and hang out in the Caribbean, like, and just right. like ride this <laughs> pandemic out somewhere. Where is that drive? Right? It's like, oh no, like you're like you know envy, right? Instead of using it to lift ourselves up, we would rather pull them down so we don't have to feel this way. Right. No, definitely, and I think that's something that's taught at a very young age to. Uh, envy the like i think envy is the perfect word envy the people who are very successful but then there's also like a a sense of admiration for it like we see people that are successful and we're like oh i would love to be able to essentially because success is essentially freedom i would say love to have that freedom escape from the whatever you know for me success i was success i love that you bring that word off because because it's something that has been hounding me and 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 like almost uh uh, um yeah hurting me that word because Mm -hmm. my both my parents tend to be like are you successful right as like some standard to meet like are you like hitting the criteria and it was something that i used to beat myself up with like i had this notion i have to be a billionaire by 30 to be Actable to be okay, I should just go kill myself. Mm. But what I learned was successful is just are you doing what you set out to do? Are you are you successful in what your intention was? If your intention is to watch Netflix and you do that, you're fucking successful, right? That's it. Um, mm. So I think that's it's such an important thing to to realize that there's no it's not about a standard and like fuck what other people think, right? It's What is success to me? What is a successful life to me? What would make me actually happy or proud of what I've accomplished? And you get to pick that. So important to me. Mm -hmm. Um, But then, yes, the envy is like, oh, I don't like, they shouldn't have that. Like, who are they to have, right? And then, but then there's the admiration, which is awesome. Like, hey, that's freaking cool. 
How did they do it? And here's a secret. Most successful people love nothing more than to lower down the ladder and help other people be successful, mm. right? We want, we want to help others succeed. And it's, I mean, it's, it's the most wonderful thing in the world when someone says, you know what? I took the thing that you taught me, that you told me, and I went out and did it and I fucking killed it. I was successful. I did it, right? It's amazing. It feels fantastic. Much better than, you know, all the money in the world. Right. No, definitely. And I agree with that. And I can relate in that everything that I've set out to do for myself, a lot of it has come from learning from others. And there's things that I've been able to help others with, whether it's just somebody wants to start a podcast and they reach out and they're like, Hey, what, I see you're doing this. How do I sort of take that step? And it's like, Oh, okay. Let me just give you a couple tips. And it, it feels fulfilling to be able to give back in that sense. And I do feel like that is Exactly. Uh, the working towards like having this higher aim, just the working towards that and the actual journey of it is the success in itself. And just the going through the day-to-day -day motion and feeling the gratitude for uh, the, the ability to actually create like freedom. Cause we're in a time where uh, like, if we're looking at human history, there's more people who are middle-class than there are in poverty. Like there's more wealth that's going around. Like we're in the most prosperous time of human history. And I think a lot of people, really look at the focus on the negatives. They focus on mm -hmm. what, what is going wrong as opposed to, well, what, what can we do to make things continue to totally. grow? And it's fascinating how like the barrier to succeed are lower than freaking ever mm -hmm. in part because like, because the proliferation of information and, and like the ease with which you can access anyone on the planet, right. And, and be mentored or learn from them or just, but also because the competition is is not there. Like most people just aren't interested. Most people just don't want it. They're not doing anything for it. So it doesn't take a lot to stand out and be better, right? Like, you know, if you want to, if you want a job, like I'm, I'm friends with tons of, of founders and CEOs. We're all struggling to find good people, good, mm -hmm. good employees, good team members, right? So if you're someone who's like, you know what? I'm going to make it my mission to come into this company, learn everything I can, take on responsibility, crush it. Like the world's your fucking oyster, right? Like any, any sane company is going to be like, yes, come on in. I'm going to invest in you. I'm going to coach you. I'm going to mentor you. Like, what do you want to, like, what do you want to be? Like, you know, give me four years of your life and I'm going to do everything I can to shape you into exactly where you want to be in four years. And you can go out and do your own thing or the next thing and crush it, whatever. Like I'll make that trade with anyone, any day of the week. Most people just don't care. They're mm -hmm. just not interested. They would rather just like, all right, I'll, you know, I'll clock in and clock out and just like hang out with my friends and get drunk on the weekends and Netflix. And, you know, and that's fine. That's, it's your choice, right? That's, if that's, your definition of success, that's great, but don't come whining that you're not more successful then, right? Right, definitely. Don't or envy happy. somebody else's fruits of labor that they put in the work for and you know they're successful in when you're when your definition yeah. of success is like you said, the Netflix and all of that. And you know, even yeah. if somebody is working as like a dishwasher, I feel like you can go in, like in you know, there's nothing against dishwashers. We need dishwashers, but you can go in and you can create an environment where you're working hard and you're you move up the ladder and like you create this sort of reality that doesn't have totally. to exist in like suffering, exist in misery. Like it's all about exactly the mind. You can bring a good vibe to the people around you and be like the, the, the centerpiece of the team. I'm just, I just re read a book called the culture code and he tells the story of these, these uh, I think like he calls them Nyquist. It was a name of a person that mm -hmm. just like very quiet and, and just, is really good at like fostering conversation and fostering a, a sense of safety on the team and things like that, which is, you know, critically important to the functioning of the team. Like there's so many ways to contribute. Mm -hmm. There is a, there's a fascinating, I don't know if you've read uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's book, Total no, Recall, I have which it. is awesome. Awesome. I, I love highly Arnold. recommend it. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's fantastic. One of the things, there's so many golden nuggets in that book. But one of the things he said is how he aimed to be one of the top three movie actors, right? In, in, in the world, that was his aim. And what he realized was there's a lot less competition there. Most people don't set their sights there. They set their ambition in sort of the layer below that. 
And so that's where the muddy, the, the waters are the most bloody. That's where the hardest competition is. So it's actually easier to aim for the very, very top because there's less competition. Isn't that freaking fascinating? Wow. I never actually thought of that. And I mean, it makes a lot of sense because like, I mean, let's say somebody wants to aim for the, be the top podcaster in America. Who's the, who's their competition besides like Joe Rogan or somebody, you know, somebody else, everybody kind of right. settles. They, they reach this like peak and they, they settle there. You know, there's nothing wrong with that peak, but you can really craft and create like in yourself into something elite. Like, and totally. And I right. think that's been lost. It's just what you, what, whatever you want, you choose, right? If you choose mediocrity, that's fine. You, mm. That's what you'll get, right? If you choose to go for the very top and it's, it's all a game, right? Like it's, it's all just like whatever you want, honestly. So, so like if, if, if it makes you happier mm -hmm. to play at a lower level, that's totally fine. But like, and it's not about like, oh, you have to be at the top to be okay or any of that, right? But it really is, if you can do anything, if you can do anything you want, what would you really want? I started actually very recently inspired by, by Dan Sullivan. I started this, I want journal where I literally write down like all the things I want. <laughs> just like, that's it. Just write down what I want. Right. And it's super helpful to just have that question. Like, what is it I actually want? If I... Again, if I could choose anything I wanted, anything at all, what would I want? What would I want? Mm -hmm. People don't ask that question. Right. It took me years to be able to answer it. Like that was what, what got me, what sort of cracked me open 18 years ago was an advisory board meeting I had with some smart folks over in Copenhagen. We sat down there, I'd started this, I was pretty successful, like a year, two years in, I'd won startup of the year award um and after we'd been there for three hours one of the guys just looked me dead in the eyes and just said like we've been here for hours i still don't know what you want and i was like what the fuck do you mean like i, I just want to be successful i want to build a big company like what do you mean what i want and it made me realize one that it was okay to want stuff in business like actually like wanting caring about stuff but also too, I had no crappy, I had no freaking clue. I had no idea what I wanted. And the reason I didn't know was because I couldn't feel myself. And that's, I mean, that's the thing to realize, like you can't mentally, wanting is not a mental exercise. It's, it's a heart, it's a gut, it's a, left, it's a right brain exercise, right? It's, you have to be able to feel yourself, but I couldn't because uh, I was so shut down. So that was the first order of business for me. And it took, it took several years to, to unwind all of that stuff. Right. No, definitely. And it is something that is more of like the la language words will never sort of rationalize it in a way that you can understand it. It does come from the heart It takes like right. looking inward. And I think that's something that I've been learning as well. Like there's, there's a whole other side to ourselves that we don't even uh, like most people don't even tap into that. We repress, we you know, I, coming from a teaching background, that's like where the magic and the power lies, right? right? We, we don't teach then, it to our the, kids, unfortunately. No, no, because we're scared of it, right? And we don't know how to do that. And so, yeah, we, 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 again, socialize it out of our kids. There's a fascinating study. I forget which book this was from. I read this, I think, probably Kahneman or something like that, but about how, you know, they let people choose between, like, two, two pictures. Yeah. One was a cat and one was, like, some fancy art or something. You know the story? Right. And then like people, people pick the cat picture because it was cute. It made them happy. But then when they were asked to justify their choice, they chose like the fine art piece. Mm. Right. So it's like once you, once you engage the mental side of things, like the left brain, and you have to justify and, and come up with explanations, then we rationalize ourselves out of what we really fucking want. Mm. Isn't that tragic? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we have to know that and then just turn that voice off and just be freaking honest with that gut level, that that crutch level, you know, groin level desire. What is it I want? And just freaking own it and go for it and fuck what anybody else thinks. Fuck what you think. Right. Because yeah. <laughs> your yeah. thoughts about it are just like you're like regurgitating bullshit that you've been socialized into anyway. Right. Right. A hundred percent. We're our own worst enemies. Like the thinking mind will talk us out of, like we, we might have a dream that is inside, but we'll talk ourselves out of it just out of, out of fear thinking we can't achieve it. 
um, right. it's, it is tragic. It is tragic. And that's something I've like a skill that I've really tried to focus on learning as well. It's like, okay, what does the heart say? Follow that brain. Like you'll catch up later. <laughs> just forget about it for right totally. now. And just allow yeah. the heart to lead the way. I think faith. that's so important. Faith. I think that's yeah. a beautiful principle. I know, I know that's something, one of your goals of what you want is to become like a special advisor to the president, right? And sort of on conscious nation building. And I, I would love for you to talk about that and sort of that goal of yours. Cause I, I think it plays into a lot of what we've already talked about, but you know, I'd love to hear sort of your thoughts on that and you know, what that goal is ultimately about. Yeah, you bet. I mean, it's, it's a freaking tricky one. I'll <laughs> tell yeah. you to talk about like big assignments and it came out of exactly that question. If you could do anything you want it, what would it be? And it was a question my, my wife asked me on my birthday, um, what is it now, eight years ago when we were living in India. And the answer that came to me was that, like, I want to be a special advisor to the president of the United States on conscious nation building. And I'd never thought anything like that before, not even remotely, right? Just fully formed sentence flies out of my mouth. I'm shocked as anyone. And I start crying. I start tearing up over sort of just the, the awe of, that idea i'm like whoa what is this thing so it's just stayed with me ever since um and at first it was like i don't even what does this mean like i, I don't know i understand but it, it i've always been fascinated with how we organize ourselves as a society what are our laws our rules or regulations or institutions like school system and taxation and immigration and borders and and you know uh, I don't know, I think I said education, legal system in general, like all of these things, right? How, how do we design these institutions? And in order to do that, I'm a software engineer, right? When you design software, you need to ask like, what is, what's the outcome, right? What's the environment that this is going to be used in? What is the outcome? What is the thing it's supposed to do for us? And what are the values that are governing our, our decision-making? So that's essentially what we need to do for government, right? Like, well, what is the outcome that we want the government to produce for us? So I'm someone who, who believes that we have all the resources that we need inside of us, each, each and every one of us as individuals. So I would want an education system that acknowledges that, that invites kids to, to um, develop their, their creativity, their free their critical thinking skills, but also their discipline, their focus, right? That's super important to achieve things in, in life. And, and uh, gives them opportunities to chase their cur curiosity and, and learn whatever they're inspired to learn, right? Those are, would be things that are super important to me. And, um, and then mostly gets out of people's way, right? Mm. So uh, I do believe that it's super important for a nation to say like who's in and who's out. That's kind of how it works. Like, you know, you know, we set the rules within this area and we set up the rules for who gets in <laughs> and, yeah. and who gets out i think that's critical to any community right like if you don't control who's in and who's out and set any, any 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 barriers there then you have zero control over over your community whether it's your household or your your company or your friend group or whatever right mm -hmm. um and so but the bigger thing that i realized is that if you look at sort of the big things that are you know issues that are that are facing us like economic uh, challenges a lot. You know, some people are poor. There is uh, crime. There is uh, climate change. Whatever your belief system around that might be. Um, there's corruption. There's like all these issues. They're generally like health. Um, you know, they're generally not that complicated right. to solve. Like at at the base level. They're not very complicated, and yet we make it incredibly complicated, right? Like, take health for example. We we debate endlessly about like the laws and the regulations and how should it be paid for. And now it's like tied to your employment, but then with these insurance companies that are heavily regulated and and like it's different from each you know state by state. This is just super complicated, right? Right. But what we're not talking about is like, what is it that what, what specific behaviors make us healthy and what specific behaviors make us sick, right? 
we're not asking why are we so freaking sick and what does it take to get healthy? Mm. And like, mm. even at a societal level, we, it's like, we haven't, we're 8 billion people in the world. Humans have been around for, I don't know, quite a while. Science has been around for at least, you know, a few thousand years. And we still don't know how to feed ourselves. Like we still don't know just what we put stuff in our mouths every day. And we don't have like, we should have figured that out by now, you would think, right? Like right. what are the specific things that we yeah. need to eat so that we're functioning optimally? So we're happy and healthy. And like the gut and the brain are, you know, super linked, right? So you eat junk food, you get depressed, right? Like um, that should just be a complete slam dunk by this, by this time, right? So why isn't it? Well, because all the interests are aligned against it. And because we as humans don't actually want to put in the work, we don't like we don't want, know what we want and we're not willing to go after it, right? So mm. there's a much more fundamental problem. Like health is not complicated. You eat right, you exercise, you keep a positive frame of mind, right? You, you have community and connection. There's, there's a finite set of things, behaviors, practices that you need to figure out. Like, and what's the correct for you is not the same that would be the, the correct diet for me. So there's a, a, a set of individual things you need to figure out, right? But beyond that, it's not that freaking complicated. So why aren't we doing it? Why isn't everybody doing it? And why is it that we have this massively clicks healthcare system that everybody needs to pay for it and where nobody profits unless people are sick, right? Like that's the way it's set up. So it's really uh, uh, not a healthcare system, it's a sick care system. And, and we all just like accept it as like, well, that's how it is. And like, really it's very expensive and really the government should pay for it. Like, wait a minute, <laughs> right? <laughs> how do we get right to that conclusion, right? So what I've come to, to realize is that, yes, the solutions are actually very simple, but we're just like, we're not ready. We're just, we're stuck in like stone age thinking in, in like, and, and when it comes to, tw- to, to politics, I, I got very involved in sort of politics, Twitter and conversations and all that for a while. And it's so freaking toxic yeah. and depressing because there's no like, like it's just like shouting matches and everybody's angry with each other and people get so freaking emotional about it. Right. There's no, like, I'm just like, what do we want to achieve? And and what's the best path to get there? That's how I do everything. So I look at politics. It's not how people feel about it. They just get super up, uptight. So my strategy is to, it's a 20 year, two decade long project to raise the, the maturity level, the, 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 the consciousness level of the population of the world. So mm-hmm. bring together all the best teachers that I know, like yourself, and just like do everything that I can to support people like you uh, in spreading your message throughout the world, right? If we mm-hmm. can do that, do that for 20 years, and maybe at that point we'll be, we'll, we'll be ready to actually solve this because it's not hard. It's just that we're not there. Right. No, I definitely agree. And I love that. And I think that you're right in the sense, everything is so simple. When I look at a lot of these issues, it's like, well, why don't we just do this X, Y, and Z? Like with health, why don't we just promote healthy eating, healthy, you know, exercise movement? Like I, I found ways to optimally take care of myself. Why can we not promote that in government? And it, it does, it definitely feels like a, and the answer is, is very simple too, right? Politicians, don't profit when things are going well. Right. They're, they're in the business of, of convincing you that there is a problem and then get elected to solve that problem and then proceed to not solve that problem. Because if they solved it, they couldn't get reelected, right? right? So they actually have to make that problem worse because that's the easiest way to get reelected, right? If they solve that problem, they would have to come up with a new problem that they could get elected to solve, right? It's bad for business. It's much easier to just like milk the same damn cow over and over again. And that's what they do. That's exactly what they do. And we fall for it every single time. We're stupid. And the media too. The media don't profit when things are going well. They profit when they can make people feel really outraged and offended and upset and angry and whatnot, right? And fearful so that people buy shit, right? If you look at the majority of advertisers on CNN and MSNBC and Fox News, they're medical, they're pharmaceuticals, right? So are they in in the business of making people healthy? Fuck no, of course not, (laughs) they're interested in that. 
if it can make people stressed out, we know that stress makes people really fucking sick. We know that stress is one of the most, you know, harmful emotional states to be in. And stress is just another word for fear, right? So if we can make people scared and stressed out, it's great for fucking business. Stress is fear. People buy more shit. They get more sick. It's, it's great. It's like the <laughs> most amazing flywheel. Right. They, they know what they're doing. Right. And that system almost sort of taps into, you know, with the media and con consumerism in general and social media, all on that sort of instant gratification principle. Like totally. let me put, put a quick little bandaid on it and it'll give a little temporary numbness. Like you mentioned earlier, a numbing of sort of our ourselves. And it's, it's yeah. like the, and, and we put all the problems off into the long run. Like we don't have to deal with them. We can, we can feel a little bit good right now, but deep yeah. down there's that fear, there's that stress. And it's, yeah. it's like, if you ask a question, like, what do you want to do? Then it's mm -hmm. going to bring up that stress and that emotional response, or even just trying to solve problems. Like we're talking about, like I, I'm like in the mud in Twitter on the okay? case. Like, I feel like I have to, like, if I just want to have a conversation and you have to get past the emotional reactions of people but that's yeah. what and you know it's it's easy at first like you want to get like angry or feel emotional about someone else's emotional reaction but you realize it's just right. like, just conditioning like that's just how people hold it that's all they know yeah. well the gift is so so the, the the brilliant thing to realize is that every single time you're triggered is a gift it's a mm. blessing because it's pointing you to something inside of you that you haven't healed yet that yet right so being triggered is something in the moment reminds you psychologically, like right brain, like pattern matching, reminds you of, of a hurt that happened previously in your life, usually in your childhood, that you haven't yet processed. And so it's, an, it's not about the thing that's happening right now out there, right? Zero to do with that. It's just a pattern matching. It's about, it's a, it's a pointer that says, it's lovingly says, hey, Evan, Remember this like deep pain that you buried years and years ago? Mm. Why don't we just go have a look at that? And if we do that right now, you and I together, just calmly and lovingly, you will be this much freer. That's it. it takes like, like 10 minutes. Just go in there, reconnect. One of my favorite methods is, is I call it time travel. So you, 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 you close your eyes, you tune into like, what is that moment? Like what's the earliest memory I have where I had the same feeling, right? Mm. And just take whatever pops up into your head. And then you go back to that moment, you freeze it, you like you play it over in your head, you see what's, what's going on. And then you freeze it in time at sort of the most intense point. And then you go current day, Evan, in your mind's eye, that scene is frozen. Every, everybody around you are you're like completely frozen in place, but little Evan and current day Evan are still there. And current day Evan goes back, sits with little Evan and says, I know this is tough. And like, just talk to him, hug him, like hold him, tell him what he most needs to hear. You can't change the events, the circumstances, but you can say, look, next thing that's going to happen is going to fucking suck. It's going to be fucking awful, but I'm here with you. I got you. I got your hand. I'm getting teary. eyed just thinking about this. Mm. I, I, I'm here. I'm, I will protect you. It will be okay. You'll survive this. You'll get out on the other side. It'll be fine. You'll grow up. You'll be a strong, powerful, beautiful man. And I'm here to help you the whole way. And I got you. I'm, I'll hold your hand through this experience. I can't change what's going to happen. It's going to suck. But you will make it through. Like, here, let's do this together, right? You do that. You come out on the other side just lighter mm. and this trigger point that just happened poof gone it's never gonna never gonna get triggered over that thing again mm. sometimes it's really tough you might have to do this in th three four times but usually it's that's it and it takes you all a fucking five minutes to do right no and i i could feel the power and the emotion just from you know you laying that out and i definitely agree like you can't really heal anything that you choose not to feel and like, it's going to keep the weight inside of us. And yeah, you know, I've, I've done a deal of inner child work and I always do feel that like the lightness, like it's like, there's almost right. a part of myself that I'm allowing to, uh, 
like I'm allowing the inner child not only to heal, but then fully express itself and return totally. to the exactly. imagination yes. and the playfulness and the exactly the that's that's wonder. our nature. That's who we're here to be, right? Right. Yeah. And uh, feelings I, buried alive never die. Mm. Feelings buried alive never die. It's the title of a book, a self-published book that I read years and years ago. But I just it's such it's so powerful. Like we that's what happens. The adults around us weren't capable of handling our emotions. You know, they weren't capable of handling their own emotions. They weren't capable of, of modeling for us how to deal with emotions. So we have to figure that out ourselves. And all the feelings that we couldn't process at the time got buried alive, but they didn't die. They're still there, still there. Right. And so every time you get triggered, it's just a loving invitation hey here's another one let's go look at that and boy it like talk about compounding interest like the first time is like ah, oh, i was like this is where i don't like where I, did this do anything right and you do it you do it some more and you keep doing it. you just keep freaking doing it hundreds of times and over time you just realize whoa i got how much freer and lighter and happier i am right right compound interest 100%. And it's like those little baby steps. You don't realize how many you've taken until you look back. And um, exactly. And, and once you start to do it, like I think the first couple of times, it is actually probably the most difficult. Like actually the willingness to engage in that process is the most difficult step. Once you actually do it, it becomes easier to do it because you've done it before. Yeah. You know that you can, you like, you like build a self-trust. And I think that's what a lot of people are lacking in you know, almost mm -hmm. all areas of life because people want to be he healthy. They want to be successful. They want to, uh, to have this life that brings about freedom, but they don't, I don't think they have that trust in themselves to actually take the steps to make it happen. Like there's that fear. Right. It's, it's again, it's, again, it's our, what our parents modeled for us or didn't, right? Like yeah. a healthy father will, will model for you, will, will challenge you and love you and believe in you, right? Is that backbone of support that says, this, this is not good enough. I love you and I know you can do better. Mm -hmm. Show me what you've got, right? That pushes us forward. And if we didn't grow up with a dad that did that, we have to figure out how to do that for ourselves. That was, I mean, I didn't, right? Mm -hmm. I would just buckle. I, I, would, I wouldn't have my own back. I wouldn't support myself, right? I'd be like, I wouldn't believe in myself. I wouldn't challenge myself. These are all things that I've had to learn, right? We have to reparent ourselves. Our parents didn't did the best they could mm -hmm. and it wasn't good enough. I mean, it just wasn't right? Right. <laughs> for most of us. And so we don't, we have to seek out and figure out what is a healthy, good father? What is a healthy, good mother? And how can I be that for myself? We need both. Mm -hmm. We need that father parenting and we need that mother parenting and we just have to assume that we didn't get it and that our models for what it looked like are wrong right which also fucks us up in terms of authorities and money and love and like in so many ways like completely messes with us right like you know how we related related to our parents tends to be projected onto any authority whether it's bosses or money or government or like you know whatever um so we need to readjust our, those mental models and then do the work ourselves. Mm, right. It's work. It's, you know, no one's, no one's going to come save you. No one's going to do this shit for you. Our government is not going to do it. Your, your boss is not going to do it. You're like Stephen, Stephen, what's his face? I forget his name, Stephen. I forget his last name. Uh, Chandler, Stephen Chandler says, mm -hmm. uh, people come to work to be reparented, mm. right? I think it's true. I think people go around and seeking to be reparented fucking everywhere, right? They 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 seek to be reparented by their spouse, by by their boss, by like right. any person, <laughs> really by their friends, right? Like anyone in their lives. The only one that can do it is yourself. Mm, that's powerful. And it's the thing that you have to do to get what you want in life. There's no way around it. Just you yeah. just have to do it. Hundred percent. And there's definitely. I've noticed in myself, there's like, I was more like, like I was much more comfortable in almost sort of my feminine side than my masculine side. And I needed oh, to find yeah, a balance too. of, 
Like, how do I find the healthy balance? Like, what does that actually look like? I'm not sure if I've ever seen that portrayed in the people around me. And, you know, and so it's, right. you seek I've been through out. that exact same thing, right? Because I was a very, I was a soy boy, right? I was like a very, mm. very feminine guy and like super deep into that. And like, yo, no muscles, no backbone, no, yeah. no structure, no focus, no direction. Um, and, and even that like mentally, the moment that I started looking around at the men in society around me in restaurants and places and be like, is that a man or is that a masculine man? Mm. Like, and recognizing the difference, like, cause most men are just like, they're fat and sloppy and, you know, weak and like long hair and just like, they're not masculine men. I was like, what, like, what does it mean to be a man? What does a healthy man look like? Right. We don't have a lot of role models. To me, it's like that, that there's, you know, physical strength and being physically fit, very important. Being very focused and clear and directional, goal oriented. This is where I'm going and just like almost ruthless, like a fierceness around it and an aggression behind it. Like there's, there's got to be some fucking force behind it. And that like d- desire and ability to protect your your people, your tribe, whether it's your family or your team or your company, whatever it is, that's a really important masculine trait. All of these things are like the ability to, to take your wife, to, to conquer her and, and, and like ravish her, right? These are all things that I've had to learn. Like that was definitely not where I was coming from. It wasn't what I had been modeled, uh, uh, but you know, so you gotta go figure it out. And again, there's the internet is freaking amazing. There, there are people, there are books, there are videos, there, there's all kinds of help available to do that, but you have to want it. Right. Definitely. And there's this book I've just started reading. I'm not that far into it, but it's called (laughs) King warrior magician lover. And it talks about the different archetypes that exist in the healthy, like masculine. Like we have these different roles that we're you know, supposed to play. And, you know, that's, it's true for masculine and feminine. I think both sides need to find, uh, you know, yeah. all people need to find sort of the healthy balance, but I see in particular, mm-hmm. like, what is the ideal, like r- role of a man in leadership? Right. And we look at like, let's say a politician, like a, I don't know, just any, you can name any man in the Senate. And it's like, are they actually like leading for the people? Are they like, truly healthy in themselves and like bringing balance and like, and it's, you don't see it represented at any sort of like, it's a, it's an exception to see somebody in fully in themselves and, and actually wanting to making a positive difference for the people around them, for the community at large. Like, and I think people recognize it when they see it, but they don't view it as the norm. They just view it as like, Oh, this, this guy's a, a great guy. And he's, like why don't we model ourselves around that and i think it's right you know and look at our politicians most of our of the people in congress look at their posture right look at their bodies look at their like just how they how they act are they are they people that we would like trust with our kids or the direction in life like i'm not so sure right right like you have to uh, i i I was helping a friend some, some years ago who was struggling uh, financially and, and he really wanted to help people. And I meet so many people who are like, Oh, I just want to help people. And I'm like, yeah, but the best way that you can help the poor is to not be one of them. Mm. Right. <laughs> like it doesn't help the poor people, any iota that you're poor, right. It doesn't make their lives any bit better, but if you have money, then you have resources, you have things that you can model for people, right? You can model behaviors that got you to be wealthy and you can share that wealth. You can give it to people, right? So, so taking care of yourself first is so important. And that's what I would love for us to see that we elect politicians who can create success for themselves, right? Mm -hmm. In all areas of life, not just financial or like that they achieve whatever politically, but, but, you know, healthy body, right? Healthy mind, relationships creativity that feeling of like being radiant and alive like figure that shit out and and knowing their purpose and living their purpose figure that shit out and then help other people do that through your policies and your politics right Right. that's not the world that we live in of course right no and 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 that's reflective i mean i i think the 
like what the collective state is really just a macrocosm of what's going on at the individual level for most people. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we have the politicians who are. And people don't want to be told, hey, go figure it out. You can do it, right? They don't, they want to be told, no, it's a system. It's because it's rigged against you and you can't really and poor you. Like victimhood, right, is pervasive. And you can see it like once you start poking at people's victim, they get super defensive. And I get it. I get it because I lived as a victim for the majority of my life. Right. Someone else's fault. It was my parents. It was my wife. It was my kids. It was the weather. It's my friends. It was like whatever. Right. Anyone else's fault that I was unhappy and unsuccessful. And what it cost me was psychologically unconsciously i had to remain unhappy and Mm -hmm. unsuccessful because if i got happy or successful i would have to admit that it was within my control the whole time and i was never a victim right that's fucking painful to swallow it's fucking painful to swallow that i've spent 40 years of my life lying to myself, blaming other people for bullshit. That was always my responsibility and no one else's. Mm. Ugh, that freaking hurts for like a minute. And then it feels amazingly freeing, right? But people don't want to go through that step. It's, it's, just, it's sort of the portal that you have to go through of recognizing, yep, nope, it was never anybody else's fault. And I was digging this hole deeper and deeper and deeper for myself. Fuck, we don't want to go there. Right. But it's the only way. And so because people don't want to go there, they would rather keep voting for electing people who tell them, oh, yeah, it's your fault. It's because of the system. It's because of the evil corporations or evil Republicans or evil Democrats or evil like, you know, rich people, uh, who the fuck? Like, it's because of someone else's, right? Uh, it's someone else. It's not your fault. Mm. That's that's where the votes are. That's where the money is, right? It's no money in telling the other people. You fucking own it. You broke it. You own it, right? That's not, right. That's not profitable. Right. And if anything, I just read a quote the other day. I don't remember who it was from. It was, uh, the victim stays a victim for as long as they choose to. And so, and, and, and you know, it's, things happen and like, yeah, we should, if, if somebody like wrongs us in some way, like, yeah, we can feel that. Like there's nothing wrong with acknowledging when maybe things went wrong, even against our own uh, doing like things are going to happen in life where we can't control, but then it's, it's like, how do you take control and not allow it to be the thing that brings you like down in life? How do you not let it control you? And you know, I think people like the, the hardships can be something that lets you rise up. It can be something that propels you. Totally. And I, I it's, think it is what, like, I wouldn't be who I, I am today if I hadn't had all this, like, be, if I hadn't been bullied, if I hadn't had parents right. who behaved in the way that they did, like, and I'm grateful for it. I had a moment with my dad some, some three years ago or so. Where I, so we, we were in this holding pattern where I was like, oh, you wronged me. You were like a terrible father and, and like, and you never saw me and loved me and like, or not in the right way or whatever. I was like, I was like in my victim bullshit around, around my mm-hmm. dad. And he was kind of like, like, he kind of wanted for me to accept him. Right. So we were, we both wanted the other person to accept us and love us. And, and, mm-hmm. and that was a holding pattern we were in for years. And then one day I decided to just call him up. Here's a very subtle, tricky thing that happened here. I, get, I decided to call him up and, and tell him that um, he was the best father I could ever have had. Mm. All right. Just that I want you to know you're the best dad I could have ever wanted. And he's like, son, you're bullshitting me. And it's very sweet of you to say, but I like you're full of shit. And I was like, no, no, no. Listen, hear me out. And so I gave him a couple of reasons. You were, you created a safe environment for me to grow up in. You always made sure that we had, you know, 
food on the table that I, you know, I was, I was, you know, physically fine. You taught me how to program you, you like really invested in my growth, which is in that way, which has been tremendous for me. You gave me the opportunities. We had computers around like in 1980, right? Like, I mean, this is like early. Um, and so it's like, he took it in. And what was so brilliant about it was that, that when I first said it, it didn't feel true for me. It was a lie. It was a deliberate lie to give him that, mm. to make him re- feel it. And then the moment he received it and took it in, something dramatic shifted in me and it became true. Mm. And it's been true since. And I, I genuinely feel and believe that my dad is the best dad I could have possibly had in this lifetime. Like, period. And, and getting to that point is, has been just so incredibly powerful. Mm-hmm. Our parents are so important in our lives. And it's, it's, it just released me to go do what I want to do in my life. Right. And just have a phenomenal relationship with my dad. Right. No, and that's powerful. And I think, I actually think most people, obviously there's the issues of like fatherlessness and, you know, there's people who grow up in broken homes, but um, generally speaking, I think adapting that mindset and realizing that parents do the best they can with the circumstances that they have with all of their conditioning and all their crap, like, right. you know, they did the best. But even they can. beyond that, right. That this is, what you the exact thing that you needed in order exactly. to for you to become the person that you're here to become right mm-hmm. there's this myth um that joseph campbell talks about in that like phenomenal six hour pbs series from back in the day with bill moyers and i i always i forget the details but it's some indian tradition where it's like you know imagine that you're you're sleeping and you're dreaming and like your dream lasts like 72 years average lifetime you get to choose exactly what you want to experience during that dream, right? So tonight you get to choose exactly what you're going to dream of. And you're like, you know, hot chicks and lots of sex and money and success and traveling experience, all that stuff, right? All the good stuff. Mm. You do that and you do that like night after night after night and you have a phenomenal time. And then after a while, you're like, this gets a little fucking boring. Ah, let's, let's have a little bit of tra- challenge, right? A little bit of resistance, a little bit of obstacles here and there. So you add a little bit and you do that. And then, over time, you add in more and more challenge because that's what makes it fun, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it just gets boring if it's just like boobs and caviar all day long. Right. And so do that long enough and you end with exactly the life that you're living today. Mm. Wow. Right? When you look at life that way, of this is the most amazing life. Like, I cho- this is dream fucking life. And the obstacles and everything that I have to overcome is part of that fucking dream. I made this for myself as the most exciting fucking thing ever, right? Yeah. When you start looking at life that way, really hard to be a victim. Right. No, everything really shifts. Everything <laughs> shifts. And there's that, there's that gratitude just for the now. Because you can choose that in every single moment, like regardless of what you've been through in the past. Like I, you know, I, I, I tell people all the time, like you have the choice, like right now you can just decide I'm going to feel good. Like I'm going to have my optimum life. And then, you know, the, the challenges that come along with that along the way, they're just challenges. Yeah. They're, you know, they're, they're testing. If, is this the optimal life that you want? Are you willing they're to work? Gifts, right? right. Just like whenever right. you're being triggered, it's a gift. Right. A hundred percent. And I think we could use that sort of societal, like shift in mindset, if you will. I mean, I, we're, we're coming in on an hour, so I want to be mindful of your time, but you know, sort of wrap up what's, what do you, when you look into the future, what do you, what are your thoughts? I mean, I'm actually very, a, I'm, a, I'm a half class full type of person generally. And because I'm living in myself in a space from, you know, I see, I ha- have this similar mindset as you, like I see a, a future that is only going to continue to improve barring something completely drastic I can't control. But, you know, I, so I, I feel optimism looking to the future and this message becoming more uh, prevalent and widespread because I'm interacting with more and more people who think this way. So, I mean, what are your thoughts looking in the future and what you sort of expect? 
my, my glass is like full, full and overflowing, <laughs> like ridiculous, ridiculously uh, uh, overflowing, gushing even. Um, I, I do think, I mean, a lot of people are suffering, like deeply yeah. suffering, right? Like uh, um, uh, crisis of meaning over what's happening in the world, like, you know, unhealthy, poor, stressed out. Like, I mean, just what's going on now with the pandemic and, and the way that people, and I live in New York City, by the water, people are going around outside with masks on. I mean, like, not even like, like breathing in fresh air, like how terrified do you have to be? Like, what, what, what must it feel like inside of that person? And realizing that that comes 100% from our mind, right? Our thoughts. We're being terrorized by our own beliefs. That's heartbreaking. And I mean, how incredible is it that that's all that's like that's that's harming us and hurting us, right? right? So I, I think I think a, a crisis of meaning is the most beautiful thing in the world, and I think more people than ever are going through that crisis of meaning, um, and that's awesome. It opens up that possibility for for growth. You have to be in that sort of open, vulnerable um, state of mind in order to start searching for for answers and there are so many amazing answers out there there's so many opportunities for every anybody to do whatever the hell they want right you can make money doing practically anything right like yeah. uh, and it's it's things are evolving so fast there's massive opportunity everywhere and people are waking up at an incredible rate to this fact so I'm super optimistic. I'm also super empathetic for all the people who are living in fear, in fear and fear, and and suffering and pain. Um, and I would just want to like hug them all and just make them realize it's okay. It's gonna be okay, right? Like just that that moment of like ah, you just drop it all. My friend John Parkin wrote a book ten years ago called "Fuck It: The Ultimate Spiritual Way." Right? It was like. Uh, when you just like fuck it just fuck it just like uh, you just let go of all that shit because it's all in your head it's all in your head that you're causing this suffering this pain for yourself so mm. i just really wish that more people choose that and i believe that they are right but right now there's definitely people who are going super hard down the like pain and suffering and, and yeah. crisis mode and then they're, but that's what they need in order to wake up, right? That's what they need in order to, they have to hit that rock bottom. That's where they find the freedom. Right. So I'm super optimistic. Nice. Um, I really am. I don't know, like shit may go to hell in a handbasket in between, right? Because like things get worse and then they get better. And like, right. I'm, I, I interviewed Byron Katie a while back. I don't know if you read any of her oh, yeah. stuff, but my, my, I think my opening question for her was, Katie, if you're a queen for a day, <laughs> what would you change and she took a moment to pause like this very katie style and she was like change like i am and nothing mm. right <laughs> i'm with katie in that like reality is fucking amazing it's incredible it's super exciting who cares for fiction when there's this much amazing shit going on in reality right i'm super pumped about it it's super fascinating and um and like whatever's gonna unfold is gonna be super exciting. And you know, I'm just I'm in for the ride. I'm watching it. And my life has gotten better and better and better with every day and every year. And I don't see why that would ever slow down or stop. Right. right? It's it's a choice. We all have that choice. Right. Hundred percent. And I I'm on that same boat. So that's why I feel that same optimism. And it's uh, it's exciting. It's exciting. It's an exciting time to be alive. So when I tell that to people, you, you kind of all need to know your audience when you say it's an exciting time to be alive, but um, it definitely is. Um, so Calvin. Yeah. Um, it's all in how you perceive it, right? It's yeah. it's in your mind. You're, you get to choose um, how you see things. 100%. So so Calvin, I want to thank you for coming on the podcast. I mean, this was a fun conversation. It, I, when I looked at the clock, I was kind of surprised that it was already an hour because it kind of flew by. Um, but is there anywhere you'd want to send the listeners like, you know, to interact with you, find your work, um, you know, wherever that may be? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, go to my website, sign up for the email there, calvincorelli.com. And then um, I do, one of my favorite things to do is, is jump on 
uh, we call them AMAs, Ask Me Anything, it's like live Q&A with, with people, with my audience, and just help them in any way that I can answer questions, engage with people, business stuff, life stuff, all the things that we've talked about here. And so um, sign up for that email and, and do that. You can find the videos, the recordings from them on, on YouTube. And I share clips also, Instagram, um, uh, Facebook, what else? TikTok, LinkedIn. So tend to share the clips all over the place. Um, so those are, yeah, those would be the places to, uh, to find me and follow me. Thanks. And yeah, if you like get in, it's literally my most favorite thing to do in the world is get in there and just like engage with people and help, help move people forward, you know, mm, for, yeah. for free. So awesome. um, make sure you sign up for one of those. Sweet. And I'll put those all in the episode description so they can just scroll down one click away. It's all right there for them. So awesome. Fantastic. Uh, Galvin, thanks again for coming on. We'll definitely have to do this again in the future. Cause uh, this, this is a lot of fun and you know, it was a pleasure having you on. Thank you, man. It was so, so much fun. I'd love to do it again with you, man. Awesome. And uh, I'll definitely be following along on what you're doing. So appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah. I'm excited to see where your journey continues because it's only up from here. So awesome. That's it. All right. All right. Exciting times. Exciting times, my friend. All right. That's going to wrap up the episode. Everybody take care. I'll see you next time. All right. Stop the recording.